Apixaban, a new anticoagulant drug, was significantly safer and more effective than warfarin for preventing stroke and systemic embolism in atrial fibrillation patients. Data from the clinical trial known as Aristotle showed significant relative reductions in stroke, systemic embolism, major bleeding, and overall mortality. Dr. Ralph Brindis, past president of the American College of Cardiology, discussed the study findings. The Apixaban study was incredibly important. For decades now, physicians have been looking for an alternative to warfarin. We appreciate all the downsides and difficulties in the using of warfarin in terms of its drug-drug interactions, in terms of its risks of bleeding, and uh, the inconvenience of having blood tests. So here, this, tri this trial, the Aristotle trial, was another study looking at an additional new oral anticoagulant that could replace Coumadin. I think that the Aristotle trial is incredibly important. I think it has basically put another dagger or stake in the heart of the use of warfarin in the management of uh, atrial fibrillation to prevent stroke. The clinical implications are huge. Here we have a, a trial now, uh, well designed, that has showed not only in terms of its primary endpoint that the drug is not only non-inferior to warfarin for preventing stroke, but actually superior. And in addition, as decreased bleeding in our patients compared to warfarin, and incredibly even gives a signal that was uh, statistically significant that the mortality rate in patients on apixaban is less than warfarin. If I, I would view the study as a home run, if you will, in comparing apixaban or another factor 10A inhibitor against warfarin. There's still a lot of challenges uh, for our clinical community and our patients in the utilization of any of the new factor 10A inhibitors. A particular concern uh, for myself and our clinicians is the issue of patient adherence to these medications. For example, in warfarin, although it ha is incredibly inconvenient, uh, we know the patient, what the patient's adherence is because we do blood tests every three weeks. Now you have a drug that you have to take twice a day and we don't measure whether they're complying with the medication in terms of any anticoagulant effect. So it will be very interesting to see if what we see in randomized clinical trials where we know the compliance is 100% by pill counts could actually be reproduced in the clinical community. This is an important uh, concern for us clinicians. What are the next steps for research? Well, the next steps for research in terms of uh, the factor 10As is trying, to, again, to learn more about which particular patients would be best suited for which drug. We now have in our armamentarium, if you go in our own medicine chest, we have warfarin, apixaban, rivaroxaban, and there'll be other factor 10A inhibitors. And it may be that for certain patients, we would choose one drug over the other depending on their situations. Rivaroxaban, for example, is a once-a-day drug. Patients who have renal failure may need different uh, drug uh, management uh, strategies. One of the exciting uh, uh, cons uh, things down the line related to these new oral factor 10A inhibitors is the possible uh, release or development, if you will, of a direct antidote to these medications actually being presented at this meeting, something we do not have, for example, with the Bigotram, the other oral agent that's now on the market. For Global Medical News Network, I'm Heidi Spleet.